Good morning, folks. We are now settled into a mid-minimum uptick in solar activity. As that happens, the storms are ramping up here on Earth as well. We'll check it all out, including top news stories, but we're beginning at spaceweathernews.com and finding the last 24 hours on our star with bright active regions peppering the disk and dark patches of the coronal holes. The big story right now is the sunspots and solar flaring. Did hit C-class range last night and we'll be monitoring closely today. Departing spots out ahead have the same size and magnetic setup as yesterday, no flares. Meanwhile, at the incoming limb, we've got our first visibility of the core sunspot of that large grouping just entering the Earth-facing half of the sun now. Will be an excellent opportunity to gauge the Earth-facing quiet effect on that group as it turns in. Solar wind here. You can see plasma speed and temperature are both dropping this morning as Earth exits one stream. Geomagnetic conditions are calming as well. But even if all sunspots were to remain silent this weekend, we'll still have space weather. Coronal holes are sending their intense streams this way, with that equatorial opening now visible as well at the limb at the left, incoming. Folks, there is now a 70% chance of development of the Gulf system over the next five days. We'll be updating the model each day as risk exists, and what should be much more of a problem than the wind will be the rain. Major inundation expected to last for days won't be until about a week from now that the system begins shifting to the northeast. Let's use Null School to come up through the cyclone near Yemen. At ground level and cloud level, we see the inflowing wind from all around. But as we come up even higher to the vorticity layer at 5,000 meters, we see much more of a column, slight outflow starting in the center, which takes over and dominates by the time we hit the jet stream, totally dumping the column out at this height, which had been accumulating from the low pressure below. Rosetta has come out with new science on Comet 67P. They've been able to track source points and exodus pathways of the coma material leaving the comet. Very cool animation, images, and article along with it. Landrew 79's pillaging of raw space data files continues. This is Opportunity's raw Phobos eclipse of Mars visible in a test shot. Exceptional skill pulling out those images. Up next, when scientists saw this feature in visible light, they wanted to see what else was around it, so they pointed Chandra. A circle of x-rays is not at all what they were expecting, but when laying over top one another, they began telling a complete story. Like most of the gorgeous features of the cosmos, this was an explosion, a nova, and what remains is a powerhouse mini-star in the middle. It's able to excite the nova remnants all around it to where they re-emit energy as x-rays in a circular-looking bubble around the star itself. The ESA Storm Hunter got its first light, first images, and for those who don't know, they can take over 100,000 images of thunderstorms per second, planning to hunt down some sprites, elves, and other electric phenomena. Lastly, folks, we've got a very cool look at a dark phase of a galaxy. Researchers were surprised because in the star energy image on the right, there's almost nothing showing for the massive gas structure on the left side, which is about to become a galaxy. Folks, believe it or not, hitting the like button, leaving a comment, hitting the subscribe button, and that notification bell next to it. Those things matter and help as much as anything else to keep these news free and coming out here on YouTube each day. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 4.35 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.